All right, let's recap what we've said about aerobic cellular respiration. And in case you're interested, we're not getting into the super nitty gritty of this. We're basically looking at the big picture. And you say, well, we're talking about all those. Well, that's still kind of the big picture. The nitty gritty is on the following pages in your book, which uh, we're going to look at just a tiny bit of that. But that's, that's about it. So what have we learned about uh, aerobic? And why do I call it aerobic cellular respiration? Because that's respiration involving plenty of oxygen. Okay, we're going to contrast that in a few minutes with anaerobic respiration when there is, for some reason, less than enough oxygen. But aerobic respiration involves all three of these. Uh, we're sitting here, I hope, and uh, sitting here in aerobic uh, respiration mode, uh, sucking in plenty of oxygen, uh, not having any problem. Uh, glycolysis, Krebs cycle, electron transport chain. So what did we learn about these? We learned uh, uh, where they occur and so uh, glycolysis, uh, the, the reactions of glycolysis occur where in the cell? In the cytosol. Cytosol. And what is the cytosol again? The liquidy part of the cytoplasm. What's the cytoplasm again? Everything inside the plasma membrane outside the nucleus, right? The cytosol. And so the, the cytoplasm, and the cytosol is the liquidy part of the cytoplasm. Where do the uh, these two stages occur? They occur inside an organelle called a, in the singular, be mitochondrion. Is that right? Yeah, plural, mitochondria. And so inside mitochondria, inside mitochondria, and so this is like one big long assembly line. And where does the assembly, the assembly line start? It starts with this guy right here, right? It starts with this guy, glucose. Glucose goes in as the uh, goes into the beginning of the assembly line, the glycolysis, and the energy from glucose is step by step extracted uh, from that glucose molecule through all this, all this uh, stuff here. And so uh, one step that will be important as we uh, talk about anaerobic respiration is the end product of glucose, <coughs> and, uh, of glycolysis, the end product of glycolysis. Glycolysis is glucose in, but the end product of glycolysis is something called pyruvic acid. Pyruvic acid, and that pyruvic acid enters the mitochondria for ongoing processing. That's just a step in the assembly line right there. Pyruvic acid and it's a product that's passed on to the next step and so forth. And so uh, did I put uh, mitochondria? That doesn't look like an A to me inside mitochondria. Alright, <clears throat> what else did we uh, see in this last uh, series of videos? We saw not only where they occur, we saw which step requires oxygen. That's crucial. Uh, which one requires oxygen? It is this one here. This is the one that requires the O2. So when we're sucking in O2, it's uh, for the electron transport chain of all the bazillions of mitochondria we have in our cells. And then a very, very important aspect of this, I mean, it's a crucial, I mean, it's a key aspect of this, is the charging of, of, of ATP. And so each one of these stages in aerobic cellular respiration charges up a certain number of ATP molecules. Glycolysis charges up how many? Two ATPs. That's glycolysis. Glycolysis charges up two ATPs. And the Krebs cycle charges up also two ATPs. Electron transport chain, a whopping 32 ATPs. And so a total of 36 ATPs. And so is that enough to get us through a day? I don't think so. It's not even enough to get us through a blink of an eye. But uh, <coughs> how much uh, glucose is processed in order to charge up 36 ATPs? A whopping how many glucose molecules? A whopping one. Yes, a whopping one. And so what does this do right here, this assembly line process? It starts with glucose at the very beginning and has an intermediate product, a bunch of intermediate products. 
and in the process the energy from a glucose that was originally in a glucose molecule is what kind of energy is that called? chemical energy it is extracted step by step by step and it is transferred in two different directions it goes in two different directions this is one this is one and uh, uh, and so uh, uh, what's the other heat we'll talk about that again in a second and so the energy originally in the glucose molecule is extracted and stored again in another molecule a molecule a temporary energy storage molecule called ATP and so um, as part of the overview then uh, I'm going to erase this to give myself a little room we start with glucose we start with glucose and we start with the chemical energy in glucose where does that end up? it ends up in two different places heat that's why we're hot because of the energy released by cellular respiration uh, that's why we're above room temperature and the other is it's stored in ATP stored in ATP molecules now there is a final question there about uh, in this section what fraction of the original chemical energy in glucose goes in each direction well it's uh, as far as uh, heat in ATP about 60 percent and 40 percent 60 40 that means the energy in a uh, that was originally stored in glucose as it goes through this process about 60 percent of the energy that was stored in these chemical bonds is released as heat about 40 percent of it is stored in another uh, chemical bond, the chemical bonds in ATP. Uh, I used to ask students to compare this to a car. Say cars, do cars, uh, cars use uh, ATP? No, no, no. Cars produce, a, car engines produce a lot of heat. And what molecules being taken apart in cars? And the car engine, gasoline molecules, that's right. ATP can kind of be, cons kind of be compared to the engine rotation. And so car engines, I've been I read someplace uh, of the chemical energy originally in gasoline molecules about 75 percent is released as heat and only 25 percent to make the engine go around so do our cells operate more or less efficiently than gasoline engines I think for whatever it's worth they operate more efficiently alright that is our recap on the overview of cellular respiration